Hello everyone, and today we're going to be making a uh, Total War Games tier list, and this time we're going to be discussing the historical accuracy of each game. Okay, I thought this would be uh, an interesting idea for a video. So, uh, first of all, let's get um, those two out of the way. I mean, they don't even belong there, but whatever. Um, now, uh, first one that comes up here is Thrones of Britannia. Now, I haven't played this one too much. I was gifted this by uh, a fan of the channel. Thank you uh, very much for that. Uh, but um, in terms of historical accuracy, at least compared to other games in the series, it's pretty good. However, uh, the building system in the game does not really reflect, you know, uh, appropriately a... Um, you know, historical progression, a sense of historical progression. You know, th there's that color-coded system for economic development, economic buildings. That's very gamey to me, and that really hurts it, I think. Um, because that's very important to me, to have that sense of historical progression as you go through the game. Now, uh, um, uh, especially, and especially having that connected to the building system, that is important to me. So... I have to give this uh, B. It's pretty good. I don't like the building system, and I think that really hurts its historical accuracy because historical accuracy is not just, you know, portraying the situation at the start of the campaign accurately, right? That's a huge part of it. I would say that's the majority of what I'm considering here. But um, the other thing is the feel of the historical progression in the game. And that's something I don't feel from the building. I think the building system really makes it feel gamey, right? That's another thing. If if it feels really gamey, like a gamey mechanic, like the building system in Thrones of Britannia, that hurts historical accuracy for me because then it, it takes you out of it, right? At least for me. Uh, next, we have Three Kingdoms. So Three Kingdoms... Uh, you know, it, there's a records mode and there's the sort of fantasy mode. Now, or the romance mode, I should say. Now, all in all, in terms of portraying all the characters, uh, portraying their starting situation at least somewhat accurately, um, it's pretty good, right? And, you know, I'm I'm considering only the records mode here, not the fantasy mode. Now... Uh, all in all, they do a pretty good job there. Now, the issue with Three Kingdoms, if you're looking at it from just a records mode perspective, and the, it's kind of similar to the issue with uh, Shogun 2 here, is uh, the portrayal of the militaries, right? Uh, milita the military portrayal in Three Kingdoms and Shogun 2, I'd say, are probably some of their weakest aspects because it's really difficult to actually portray the militaries of those uh, periods accurately with the Total War engine, right? You have to make some changes. You have to have more mixed units, right? Uh, if you want to be hyper-realistic, you have to really uh, improve uh, archers, for example, especially in regards to Shogun 2. Now, uh, I have to say, and, and you know, that makes things feel gamey. Now, it's less gamey than Shogun 2 here. So, I have to give Three Kingdoms... In terms of getting all the historical characters in, the important ones, in terms of the sort of geography of the map, in terms of the faction selection, the number of kingdoms, uh, princedoms on the campaign map, um, I'd say it's pretty... It does a pretty good job, actually, of portraying the sort of chaotic situation in China at the time. So you know what? I'm going to give it a B. Uh, that might be a little controversial, but again, I'm only considering records mode. If you want to argue with me in the comments, please do. Again, these are the two games I've played the least, so you can definitely argue with me on that front, and that is totally fine. The next one is Shogun Total War. Um, Shogun Total War kind of suffers from the, a lot of the same things Shogun 2 suffers from in terms of historical accuracy. Uh, you know, it's just really difficult to portray all of the major clans 
right? And now I think it definitely could have been doable to do so. And you know, there are so many mods. There are many mods for Shogun 2 that actually add a ton of provinces, a ton of new clans, and th those really showcase how deficient Shogun 2 is in terms of portraying the historical situation as accurately as possible. And it also suffers from the sort of gamey divisions between certain units, like you have Yari Ashigaru, right? You have the the Yumi Ashigaru, the archer, uh, the archers are the separate units, even though, you know, uh, people, especially samurai, would have been able to utilize multiple weapons, right? And they would have switched. So, and you know, the uh, having katana, katanas as a major weapon, when katanas were actually like a secondary weapon, a sidearm that everyone usually had, and they were not actually that effective. So I'm going to put this under D. Because, you know, portraying the historical situation, not great. Um, but you know what? The characters are pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go with C because we'll get to some Ds later. Now, next we have Shogun 2. I, uh, similar complaints there. Uh, again, most of the things I talked about for Shogun go for Shogun 2 as well. Now, uh, let's get to Rome Total War. This is going to be an interesting one. Now, in terms of historical accuracy, Rome Total War is much maligned, right? So you've got the Flaming Pigs. Right, you've got um, the naked fanatics running all over the place. Uh, so, uh, Rome Total War has a bunch of issues with historical accuracy. And, you know, I've made many videos about um, a lot of my issues on that front, especially. As, uh, what especially bothers me is I understand the inclusion of things like naked fanatics, the wailing women, the flaming pigs. At least they have some sort of historical basis, right? So in in a text, in a primary source, you have a source that says that the Scythians had uh, women who would support the men on the battlefield and they would yell so that they fought well, right? So that kind of leads to the inclusion of that unit. Now, the way it's utilized in the Total War engine, definitely not the way Definitely not a super realistic portrayal, but I mean, look, these are abstractions, right, of history. So, Rome Total War, my main issue is definitely the start positions for the factions and the characters, right? Because there are several situations. There are several, uh, well, first of all, you have the amalgam factions, right? The Germans, the Iberians, and the uh, Gauls, right? And uh, the the Br Britannic faction, right? So uh, these are amalgam factions. They don't uh, their starting positions don't really make sense. They act like unified uh, factions when they shouldn't be. Uh, see Europa Barbarorum uh, for an example of how to make use of faction limits and um, consolidate several factions into one and make it feel like you're commanding several different factions, like the Koinon Hellenon. That, uh, the Greek cities. That is an excellent example of how to do that. In vanilla, you don't get that sort of a nuanced portrayal of these am amalgam factions. Now, uh, the other issue is that even for non-amalgam factions, like Pontus or uh, Armenia or Numidia or, or Parthia, you have inaccurate start positions. And the, the, there's not really a reason for that. I mean, you could, except in Parthia's case, the reason is that, I mean, they didn't really exist in the time period, and Parthia is not even included in uh, at the start date. And Parthia, geographically, is not really included, except maybe the, the tip of it, um, in the original Rome Total Wars campaign map. Now... Uh, and Numidia's start position, Pontus. Uh, so Numidia controls uh, Siwa next to Egypt, if I'm not mistaken, part of the Libyan desert, um, which doesn't make sense. Uh, Pontus controls Cappadocia, which also doesn't make sense. And uh, Armenia controls Colchis, which also doesn't make sense. And the capital of Armenia is Artaxata, which again was founded 100 years later. And actually the king of Armenia in 
Rome Total War at its start date is Artaxes I, who of course founded Artaxata 100, about 100 years after the start date of Rome Total War, uh, when actually we know who the king would be, we know what the capital would be, and so those are very egregious to me. But in terms of portraying the sort of mystery, the sense of discovery, at the beginning of Rome Total War's campaign, right? Uh, I think it does a pretty good job. The atmosphere is very good in even vanilla Rome Total War because, you know, you have to remember, we don't, a lot of these geographic issues, political start positions in the third century, they are not set in stone, right? Because we only have uh, certain perspectives at certain times, right? Like of Strabo or Ptolemy about the geography of the a lot of these regions right especially scythia that's a big black hole um and you know you just have that one perspective or a couple of perspectives that's just not enough to get a super realistic understanding of the historical geography right um and you know i'm looking at things from the point of view of a ancient near eastern scholar right so rome total war I'm conflicted on it. It has its issues, but it's not a D. Well, you know, you think about the start positions. In terms of the buildings and uh, the militaries, it's very simplistic, right? In terms of, and again, I should have probably said this at the beginning of the video, I'm only considering vanilla. The vanilla game here, not mods. So, Rome Total War, Vanilla. You don't get that sense. You you sort of get a sense of historical progression because you have reforms, right? And that is really huge. You get the Marian reforms, and you get late period bodyguards for a lot of uh, different factions. Um, you you get that sense of military progression when you upgrade your barracks and your archery ranges, and you get access to interesting units. You have unique units for different factions, so. Uh, they feel distinct from one another and you really get a sense of that diversity of the period. So I have to give Rome Total War a C. You know, it has a lot of egregious errors, but, you know, it has a lot of good points in terms of historical portrayal that I think don't get covered enough. Even I have not talked about them enough on my channel. Uh, so, yeah, I give Rome Total War a C has its egregious problems, but it has a couple of good points too, like that progression, uh, the portrayal of the diversity of the period, right? I give it a C. Now you have Rome too. Now this is a bit of a controversial one. Now in terms of comparing it to the original Rome Total War, in terms of the start positions, right? A Rome Total War uh, suffered from a lot of issues on that front but you could change the map you could add provinces you could add factions you could change um start positions very easily in the original rome total war right rome 2 is not moddable so that's why i think rome 2 gets that reputation right where you know it, it stinks it's not changeable and that is my position too i hate that you can't change the map it's something that is irredeemable for me even though we, we do have a few mods now, like Medieval 1100 AD, that are changing the map, at least changing the position and names of settlements in certain provinces. That's huge, right? That was unthinkable upon Rome II's release. Um, now, even though you could do that with Shogun II, actually, but in any case, Rome II, uh, just vanilla, comparing vanilla to vanilla, apples to apples. The campaign map for the grand campaign and i'm only talking about the grand campaign here but the other campaigns too it's pretty good it's a huge improvement definitely compared to the original rome total wars campaign map because it's expanded to the east so you can actually include uh the parthian uh, region right um without giving them odd provinces like elam that don't make sense for parthia at the start date third century now in terms of the militaries and the historical progression, uh, Rome II is pretty similar compared to Rome Total War. Now, Rome II's advantage 
is that it has a tech tree, so you get a sort of technological progression as you progress through the game, and that sort of unlocks new units as you progress. And uh, that's really good because, you know, at the beginning <clears throat> of the campaign, for example, let's, let's talk about um, Pontus. You start out as a sort of run-of-the-mill Achaemenid successor state, but then eventually you get access to a ton of, you know, mixed Hellenistic influence style units. You become a real Perso-Macedonian kingdom, right, as you progress through the tech tree. Now, this comes at the expense of the building system being much simplified here. Now, the simplified building systems in a lot of the Warscape Total War games, that really hurts... Uh, in regards, it, it feels gamey. It's very gamey to me. How you have the sort of limited building slots. It's very gamey. Some people say, oh, it makes province management more interesting. It adds a strategic element. Uh, come on, you could do that with... Uh, mo many mods have done this in Medieval 2 and Rome 1, where uh, you can tie certain buildings, certain provinces, to specific resources, right? And you can actually make choices. Like in Europa Barbarorum, for example, you can make a choice between different types of governments that give you different benefits, different units, different recruitment. So you don't have to make it artificially limited in a gamey way. You can actually uh, use hidden resources, use res some sort of resource system or government system to sort of create that unique province idea, concept, uh, strategy, right? Um, so that really drags it down for me. So that's why I have to give Rome 2 a B. It's no doubt uh, leagues better in terms of historical accuracy, just historical accuracy compared to Rome Total War, uh, especially with, like I said, the start positions. You don't get sort of ridiculous start positions like a Pontus controlling Cappadocia or Parthia controlling Elam here in Rome 2. So that alone puts it a step above Rome Total War for me. But, you know, like I said, progression, the building system, I think that really hurts it. So that's why I can't put it higher. Napoleon Total War. I really love Napoleon Total War. Uh, the atmosphere, the... You know, I have to give Napoleon Total War, I think in terms of historical accuracy, in a Total War game, in terms of what's possible while keeping the game fun, engaging, fast-paced, I think uh, focusing in on one character, like Napoleon, that makes it really possible to do that. Now, of course, Napoleon has its issues in terms of, you know, the, the campaign map, uh, certain territorial issues, start positions things of that nature, but those are unavoidable in an abstraction like Total War. In terms of what Total War can portray, I think Napoleon Total War is the gold standard in terms of uh, the historical accuracy a Total War game can bring to the table. Right, Napoleon Total War for me is the gold standard there. It's, again, if you've looked at my lists before, Napoleon is one of my favorite Total Wars. I really enjoy it. Uh, I know I'll get a lot of flack for that, but I really like Napoleon. So, and again, like I said in my video about the best historical, uh, the best Total War games for beginners, Napoleon is my number one in terms of Total War games for beginners because, again, that focus on the character um, that's recognizable for people, the factions, the start positions, the fast-paced nature of the campaigns, uh, the different historical campaigns. Uh, I really like it. I like it. And again, I think it's the gold standard in terms of what a historical Total War game can uh, do. Okay. Uh, now, Medieval Total War. I really love Medieval Total War. It's... Uh, if I was being biased, if I was trying to just be subjective, I would put Medieval Total War on S in every Total War tier list I've made, right? Uh, Medieval Total War is an epic game, legendary game, in terms of atmosphere, soundtrack, the, um, the building system, the recruitment system, the AI, the 
the, uh, the way the campaign map is sort of laid out. It's it's genius. It's a genius game. It's the first great Total War game, in my opinion. Um, it's the first Total War game I ever played. Now, in terms of historical accuracy, Medieval Total War has a lot of problems. Now, a lot of people would would say that Medieval Total War is perhaps the most historical Total War game. Because, you know, you have the different era campaigns that, again, we lost in later Total War games, including Medieval 2. You have... Um, you have uh, a pretty good faction selection, better than Medieval 2, definitely. Um, more... So you have, like, Kingdom of Aragon and Kingdom of Castile instead of uh, having Spain right? Like in Medieval 2, that sort of amalgam faction. You have better start positions, right? You don't have Portugal controlling Navarre. You don't have Milan controlling uh, Genoa, right? Instead, you have a amalgam Italians faction. Anyway, anyway, uh, that doesn't mean it's perfect, right? It, it's definitely not perfect, right? You look at the high era Byzantine start position. You control um, uh, Nikaya, Georgia, and Lesser Armenia as the Byzantines in the High Era, right? So the I believe that's the twelve twelve start date. And of course, uh, that doesn't make any sense, right? Um, because it should be Trabizond, Nikaya, and Epirus, right? If you want to sort of combine the Byzantine successor states, but that's not what happens. Um. Uh, there, there are other, there are many other issues as well. You have the Italians amalgam faction, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but all in all, medieval Total War is pretty good. And in terms of the early pre-Warscape Total War games, where you had faction limitations and things of that nature, um, medieval Total War is actually pretty good. So you know. And uh, you have to remember the fact that you have era campaigns here, right? So eventually we get era campaigns in the forms of paid and unpaid DLC for Rome 2. So I, that's actually a welcome thing for me about Rome 2. Um, but of course it's packed in in Medieval Total War. You have the historical era campaigns. You have pretty much fairly accurate start positions. Not great, especially... You know, in the high era, the Seljuk start position is strange. Early era, Byzantine start position is strange. Um, but you also have to remember the recruitment system, the building system. You can, actu uh, you can actually recruit units and you have uh, two buildings that are required, right? Rather than just building one unit and that, uh, building one building and that gives you access to a certain number of units. Um... Right, so this is actually brought back in Rome Remastered. Modders can actually make it so that a unit requires two different buildings rather than one, uh, and it's actually visible in the UI. Um, the progression in Medieval Total War is really great. Uh, the battle system, I think, is really great, very realistic. It's probably the most realistic battle engine in any of the Total War games, right? Because... Um, there's that sense of uh, not just collision, right, that you have in Rome Total War. Of course, Rome Total War's collision is the best, most realistic. But uh, you also have the sort of ranks and unit cohesion that is sort of important, right? It's the most realistic battle engine, and I think a lot of people will agree with me. So medieval, if it didn't have those... Uh, strange start positions in certain eras for certain factions, uh, like with the Byzantines in the High Era and uh, Seljuks in the Early Era, I would give it an S. But as it is, I have to give it an A. Okay, Medieval 2. I think you all know I'm not a huge fan of Medieval 2 vanilla. Medieval 2... Uh, it it avoids a lot of the issues of medieval total wars um 
historical accuracy issues because uh, you just have the one start date, uh, the early era, the 1080 AD start date. Now, uh, medieval to Total War also has a lot of other problems. Like the battle system is not as realistic as medieval Total Wars. It's not as good as Rome Total Wars, especially in terms of the collision mechanics in battle. It's just not as realistic. Um, start positions, not great. Uh, you have a lot of those problems I mentioned, like uh, Portugal controlling Navarre, Portugal being an independent uh, kingdom at the start. Of course, it wasn't even a kingdom. It was a county, and then eventually it became a kingdom in the 12th century. So the, the Medieval Two Total War has so, so many missed opportunities, especially because Rome Total War had reforms, right? Medieval Two Total War could have included such a nice in-depth reform system, but just very little effort was placed in that regard in terms of Medieval Two Total War, and that's one of the reasons it's not my favorite Total War game. Of course, the mods make it arguably the best Total War game, but in terms of the vanilla game, I just don't feel that effort, right? So, you know, you got wonky start positions, you have... Um, but, but I have to say... Oh, another thing. In original medieval Total War, you get a sense that it's the medieval period. It's the high Middle Ages. You've got very medieval-style castles, the wooden castles, the uh, moat and baileys, the uh, castle design, much more medieval. Medieval 2 Total War, again, feels like Renaissance Festival Total War. I said this in my retrospective review of medieval two total war that a lot of the time it feels like renaissance festival total war a lot of that comes from the sort of the general's bodyguards the horse barding um it, it doesn't feel 11th century it feels 14th 15th century right from the start that, that really bothers me again medieval total war the original you feel that progression in the different eras right as you progress to the late era you know you feel that progression. Medieval 2, you don't feel it. I'm giving Medieval 2 Total War a D. Because it has fewer redeeming qualities than Rome Total War. But what puts it above an F for me in terms of historical accuracy in a Total War game? Um, the Crusades mechanic. I like the Crusades mechanic in Medieval 2 Total War because, you know, you get a lot of Crusades called... Right, and on a lot of different targets, not just uh, the Levant. And that's super, super realistic. There were so many crusades called for the defense of this city, for the uh, an attack on Tunis, on Mahdia, on um, Barbastro in the Iberian Peninsula, and against the pagan uh, uh, Baltic peoples. Um, and I just really think the crusades mechanic was done pretty well in the original, uh, in, uh, sorry, in Medieval 2 Total War. Um, perhaps a little bit better than it was in Medieval Total War. So I like that. And that's why, should I pull it up to C? No, let's leave it at D. I want to have someone at D, and it's going to be my favorite Medieval 2 Total War to put in that position. Now, we've got Empire Total War. Empire, 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 Empire. Empire, of course, was the first Warscape engine Total War game. Now, I think uh, w once you get to the Warscape games, you have a dramatic increase in the ability of the Creative Assembly <clears throat> to create more realistic start positions and campaign maps, right, to allow for more realistic campaign development, right, uh, his progression, um, conquests, right? And Empire Total War kind of takes advantage of that, <coughs> right? You've got pretty historical start positions. Uh, there are still some issues, but all in all, it's okay, right? There are a lot of regions with historical inaccuracies. Uh, I made a video about the portrayal of 
uh, Armenia in the Total War games. And when I talked about Armenia and Empire Total War, I said that um, Yerevan, the province of Armenia, is controlled by the Ottomans at the start date in Empire Total War, when in fact Yerevan, even though the majority of Armenia was controlled by the Ottomans, Yerevan itself and Eastern Armenia was controlled by the Safavid Persians. Right? So there are a lot of issues, and of course those can't be fixed because you can't edit the map in Empire Total War, which really stinks. If you could edit the map in Empire Total War, that would make the mod scene so much better um, for Empire. And of course you have a portrayal of the Persian Empire and Mughal Empire that are quite sad. Central Asia, not well depicted at all. I kind of basically ignored. But it's no doubt better than, you know, something like Medieval 2. So for that reason, I have to give it a B. Uh, and of course, you get a lot of mods that improve the, the start positions. Now, in terms of progression, Empire has the tech tree uh, right at the expense of a more interesting building mechanic. And again, th that's sort of the thing that drags Rome 2 down for me. Um, and that gives, uh, forces me to give it a B. Now, <clears throat> for Napoleon, you still have a tech tree sense of progression, right? But because you're, uh, these innovations are taking place in such a short time span, uh, even if you don't feel as much of a progression, it's okay. Because uh, you're kind of focusing on a pretty short time period. So it's okay. It's less of an abstraction there. Empire doesn't do it as well. Uh, not as realistic. There are mods that improve the realism of the tech tree, of course. As But it's not bad. In terms of a vanilla Total War game, I give it a B. Attila. Attila does a really good job of portraying the sort of devastation of the era. Um, you know, it was... While it was not... It's not a dark age in the way we perceive it, right? Please uh, look up the works of Peter Brown, a uh, historian from, I believe, Princeton. He's got a lot of books about late antiquity, sort of 4th century to 6th, 7th centuries. And it's really not a dark age in the way we perceive it, right? Attila's a very dark game, and politically, uh, it's, it is very dark, and I think it's very well done, w very well portrayed in the game. <clears throat> Someone in the comments at some point said that the Attila map looks like the underside of a burnt piece of pizza. Uh, <laughs> yeah. While I really like that comment, um, I don't really agree fully. Um, in terms of historical accuracy, Attila does a pretty good job of portraying the political situation, especially for the, uh, the Sassanids. I actually like the portrayal of the Sassanids in Attila. Um, I, I like the portrayal of the different kingdoms of the Western Roman Empire in Attila. Now, it's not... 100% accurate, and there are many mods that sort of improve this realism. But all in all, there are a lot of decisions there that CA made for the start positions that I think go against that game-first philosophy. And it's sort of like, here's the historical reality. Let's try to balance things in the game around that. I really like that. So, uh, and you also get a sense of, a good sense of progression in the game, sense of the devastation, rebuilding. I like that a lot. So I'm going to give Attila an A in that regard. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much my rank, my tier list for the Total War games in terms of historical accuracy. You've got Napoleon on S tier. I think I gave my reasons pretty well for that. Uh, you've got Medieval and Attila, A tier. You've got Thrones of Britannia, Three Kingdoms, Rome II, and Empire under B. Because, you know, it's missed potential here. They, they could have done a much better job, especially with the limitless potential, right, of having factions and provinces in the Warscape games. <clears throat> but um, 
Yeah, B for them. Shogun 2 and Shogun, they get a C. Rome, uh, Total War as well, gets a C. Medieval 2 gets a D. And then uh, my favorite two uh, Total War games, everyone knows how much I love them. They are in F. Okay. That's just a joke there. Please, don't don't hurt me. They, they shouldn't even be on this list. I can't take them out now. Okay. In any case, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, and I will see you in the next one later.